climb, I'm rope. You know me as OBM guy, and I make you better, that's what I do. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the differences here between uh, conceptual teaching, conceptual framework, whatever you call it, and skill acquisition. I teach skill acquisition. Other people teach conceptual framework. For example, if you teach someone the takeaway to, you know, keep the left arm straight, do a lift, do a push, do a width in the takeaway, that's all conceptual. That means you value to understand the word used, get the kind of the meaning behind it to do a lift, doesn't mean you can do it, because the skill may not be there. And this is why you struggle with golf after maybe 50 years of golf, you don't have the skill. So when someone tells you, well, like Lee and Seymour would say, a uh, lift, right? And teach maybe his kids a lift, it's not the same thing as this. So because if Lee would do this, tell his kid to go watch my takeaway video, that you do a scapular shoulder contraction, then you're sitting down, and then you lift your arms. Now, if you would tell this kid to do that for two weeks, they will swing better after two weeks. You don't need a club to hold a club in your hand, just do that. Right? That's what you need to learn, that's a skill. Now, there's this guy called Gary Edwin, he teaches a right side swing golf, and he also talks about, you know, doing a push, right side power, whatever. He got it wrong, but it is what it is. And then, well, he talks about this. He puts his arms out like this, bends a bit before, so it goes like that, and tell you that's the shape, right? Once that's the shape, then you turn around the right side. Well, let me tell you what the skill means. Now you don't need to guess. When you do your shoulder contraction here, and get your arm in that position, it's 45 degree angle of that. What the shoulder contraction is, because people can tell you, is that it's, it's an upper arm and shoulder socket position and move. So the shoulder contraction is a position and move, right? Because if I do that, I do a shoulder contraction, get my arm in that position, I lift my arm up, I'm gonna lift the arm up, I'm gonna be forward. Same thing as Gary Edmund would say. But he didn't teach you this stuff. He didn't teach you about the shoulder because he doesn't know. And he'd been teaching over 30 years and still using a push on the right side. And he got it wrong, but that's okay. It doesn't mean because he'd been teaching that for 30 years plus or something like that. It doesn't mean they know what to do because they can get it wrong. Conceptually, you may understand something, but if you don't have the skill and can explain the skill and teach the skill, it doesn't really matter because you can't do it. And then you well, you gotta figure it out, and most likely you won't be able to. That's why you struggle golf, because the teacher us that shit. So once you do this, that's the position move for the upper arm and the shoulder socket to get in that position. So when you're sitting down and lift your arms, now you can do what people call an external rotation of the shoulder and do the most powerful move in golf without even knowing you, have, you could do it. Because all you need to do is understand that you need to position your upper right arm and shoulder socket in the position of pace. If you don't, then all the shit can happen. But they don't tell us this stuff in golf because they don't know. Now, I know some people who say they know about it. It's not the same thing because they didn't teach it. No, because they didn't know. Some people are aware of that something you need kind of, but they don't know why or how to improve it anyway. And then they, they don't teach it. Stuff like this is, you know, kind of key points when I'm trying to make it. I'm teaching a skill acquisition. And I left this information out when I was here because if you do this stuff, all this is happening at, without you understanding that you need to do it, it will happen that you will be able to do a external rotation of your shoulder and all that stuff. Because the shoulder contraction is a position to move for the right arm, the shoulder. So, the difficulty here is people don't understand the difference between the skill acquisition and conceptual framework because when people say that, because you understand the word, you know, push, you understand the word lift, you understand the word width in the takeaway, but the problem is when your brain is trying to do that, and you know, keep the left arm straight, you start to push the body to the left. That means your shoulders get in bad alignment. 
Then it tells you to have wind and take away, and now you show this in even worse position. And my course was teaching that stuff, for example. And every modern golf teacher and such, that teaches in YouTube and elsewhere, teaching tubers, by the way, they teach that stuff also. So what all this is leading to, the pupil has to guess how to move the body correctly, thinking that you understood what to do. Because you understood the word lift, you understood the word push, left arm straight, with the table, you understood all that stuff. Yeah, okay, and you get. I know how to do this now. No, you don't, because you don't have the skill. When you have a kid and you learn teaching them to tie the shoelaces, for example, can they do it? No, but do they understand what you mean? Yeah. I want you to tie, use your, you know, the strings on the shoe and tie your shoelaces. And the kid will look at you, okay, they understood what you said. Can they do it? The answer is no. So what do you do then? Well, probably you're gonna bend down and show them take this, take this, then put this one in there, you know, you know, and then do this, and that's of course into there and whatever, right? And the kid will mimic you and they will learn by trial and error how to get it right. And then it doesn't take them long for them to figure out when they can do it. Now they acquire the skill of tying the shoelaces. But here's the thing. Imagine that you will still teach them the same thing. Tie your shoelaces, tie your shoelaces. They understand it, but can't do it. Maybe they get it right one time, but usually they get it wrong all the time. And then sometimes they get it right. That sounds like golf. You get it right, good swing, maybe for a session, maybe even for a half a round, or maybe even a whole round. And then the next day you go there and you can't fucking hit the ball. Now you struggle again. Right, Tasty Johnson? Right, Luke Donald? Right, Tiger Woods? Right, Dan Van Dam? You know, the Brandon Chambly called Dan Van Dam swing the best swing in golf. And she can't flush it all the time. So she went to Sean Foley to fix it. And the dance main issue is, you know, her party. And he can't help it with that actually, that much. We also saw someone like Lexi Thompson this weekend, US Open. And I was watching her hit that pitch shot on hole 11, where she made a double bogey and her, you know, how to lose the title. If you look at that pitch shot she made on hole 11, you see that she uses her arms and hands and she can't synchronize her body doing the pitch shot. The reason why she can't do that, because her swing mechanic is horrible. It's one of the worst you can have playing on tour. And the funny thing is they can't fix that, because everybody thinks that's a good way to swing. She probably thinks it's a good way to swing, but it allows you to miss, lose titles, and she had the five shots advantage, which should be easy to do. But when you have that kind of a swing mechanic, what it means is that when you get pressure, right, then you start making mistakes. And she was telling in an interview that she misjudged the wind on hole 17 and hole 18. And I looked at the wind and I'm thinking to myself, that won't affect your shot with over 10 to 15 meters. That's when you don't understand that the pressure got to her. Because if she had a better mechanic, you get something called Morgan Ferrer. Right? Morgan Ferrer means that you can hit the same shot in any condition and you get the same result. Either it is in the major or it is you know, in the range. That's what Morgan Ferrer means. What people teaching us concept means, and usually it's also they add this, this is how it should look with the modern golf swing, something like that. And then you struggle. And they can't fix you, they can't help you. Because if you go and play, it doesn't work. They're gonna do the same thing again, conceptually, that doesn't work. You come to me, I'm gonna say, I will look at your pattern and I'll look, okay, we need to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, and I will explain why. When I was working with Hans, I, tell, you know, I told him, you know, does this feel, when you do this, does it feel like that when you do that? And he's like, yeah. He didn't know how he knew that. I knew what he felt. And that's why I can explain things, because I understand the player. I understand the athlete when they play at the highest levels and players like Lexi Thompson are told to do bullshit basically, right? And then everybody else would say, oh, she's a really great player, all that stuff. But she mechanically 
she has no more Gebrero. And when you have no more Gebrero, what happens in U.S. Open is going to happen again for her. Because she has no more Gebrero. You got to come in the cabin. And she needs, she needs help. The problem for her is that uh, the two pros called professional they hire doesn't know how to fix that. But I do. And this video is just one example of that. Anyway, I'm Rob. You know me as RBM guy and I make you better. That's what I do. Doesn't matter if you're an amateur or a two pro. I just cut through the bullshit. Hope you enjoy this. Talk to you later.